Welcome to Rodas Opinion Pondering Video. Today I'll tell you a little bit about the Polish band, or should we say Polish bands, called Batushka. But this time I'll start with a disclaimer, because there has been some misunderstandings and uh, people have mistook my review video of this other Batushka as a uh, kind of an opinion or statement or whatever to choose sides between these two bands. First of all, review is a review. It is by no means uh, my personal opinion which band is better or which guy should have the right to use the name of Batushka and all that stuff. Let's get that in a little bit. But the thing here is, when I'm doing a review video, it's just about this particular release, CD, LP, tape, whatever. Sometimes I might tell you something about the band, like I did this case, and I guess in a way it was a mistake, because now suddenly when I was praising this particular album, some people were like, okay, so you're choosing sides, you're supporting the wrong Batushka and all that stuff. Even though we all know it's not really that simple. But first, let's start to kind of figuring out what is going on. Because there are a lot, probably a few people in the world who are not aware at all what this is Batushka case in the first place. Now, this band started around 2015 or so um, and soon created a, this kind of a music which was like uh, using this orthodox art. Um, as part of their kind of image of the band, uh, including monk choirs and all that stuff, creating this kind of atmospheric black metal with hint of death metal here and there, riffs and otherwise, and it became kind of a viral kind of a hit. Considering that there was barely no release whatsoever outside, people were already like praising like Batushka is the new wave of this and that, and I kind of understood, even though I wasn't you know, exactly a fan of this liturgy. I was actually dissing it a little bit because, in my opinion, it was more of a gimmick kind of an album rather than a big thing. It's not a bad album, by the way. I think it's quite decent now that I gave it another listen, but I still don't find myself being a fan of that. But that's beside. That's just about the music. Now enters the drama. And before we get into this particular drama with this particular band, I need to remind you that this is not the first time something like this happens. Think of Venom and those members getting different ways of having multiple Venoms, like Venom and Venom Inc. Think of Entombed with Nick Anderson and the rest of the guys having Entombed and Entombed 80. Think of Turbo Negro and Hank Von Hell, Hank Von Hell. They're going different paths, and suddenly we have like two versions of the kind of the same band. And there are other examples as well. We could even go as far as to think about old Metallica and Dave Mustaine going on with his Megadeth. And, you know, guys fighting over which songs they have right and so forth. There are plenty of examples. Things are, to be honest, not that simple. I think most reason of these things is not even gore growth. People might remember when they went to court to fight over the names, the newer members tried to took the name Gorkroth because they had been there more active than the original members. But luckily it went for the originator and Gorkroth remained, you know, as the main guy of the band. But the even recent, I think the more important example of this kind of behavior with the bands, I think is immortal. Why so? Well, let's think about it for a bit. There was Demonas and there was Abbott, long-time friends creating music for Immortal together and all that stuff. Now, Demonas had his problems with wrist and whatever, this kind of a uh, symptom that he didn't play guitar and all that stuff. So basically he went on the background. Now new members joined the band and blah blah blah, you probably know the story. And there was Abbott and the other guys. But as things turned out, nowadays we have Immortal with Demonas and other guys, live or permanent members, and Abath is suddenly an outcast of Immortal. Now, there has been projects like I, there has been projects like uh, Abath, you know, and they are Immortal and all that stuff, but I mean, suddenly, how was this possible? 
You had banned without demoness, and now you have banned without a bath. Even though a bath and demoness are both more or less immortal, the core soul of the band. So, in comparison, I think Batushka's thing is a little, more, a little bit more simplified. Yet nobody is bitching that amount about band called Immortal, even though it's like 100 years older than Batushka. That point aside, let's go on with Batushka. Now I need to alt up for a little bit so I will get the names straight and properly, because obviously I'm not good in Polish, I won't remember these names for one second. But basically there are two key members in the band that are so-called core of Batushka, or used to be when there was this debut album Liturgy. So Batushka was basically created by these two guys. Obviously there were other members as well, but it comes down to these two guys. Basically the main songwriter and the so-called creator of the band is Chris, Krzysztof Derb Drabikowski. Let's just call him Drabikowski. And um, then there was this vocalist guy who were there at least claim to be creating this more or less this image and taking vocal duties and whatever Bartholomew Bart Krzyziuk. So basically they were Drabikowski, the songwriter and Krzyziuk, uh, the vocalist who were the core members. Obviously they were drummer also and some say that there were other people involved in the creating of the music but basically this is about Krzyziuk and Drabikowski. And now this big fight is who owns the right to Batushka. And now Drabikovsky made a video earlier in 2019 about how this whole band was taken over by uh, Krizyuk. And you know, there was this statement like now trademarks and band names and blah 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 was taken. And people sided quick, quite quickly with him, which is kind of understandable, him being the songwriter or the creator of the band and so forth. But as always, there is another version of the story. And now I'm not taking sides, at least yet, which one is the more truthful of this story. But uh, it seems that Krizyuk was creating or putting more effort in, you know, creation of this album on CD, doing the tour gigs, whatever merchandise it seems. And um, these guys couldn't get into agreement how to go on with Batushka. They had, it seems, very different views of which way to run the band. And nobody, I guess, in the public, I mean, knows what's going on in truth. Now, I read a few statements, I listened to uh, Dravikovsky's video about it, how this went, and it sounds solid, it sounds believable. I also read the comment from the previous drummer. These are all, by the way, linked below, and I hope the links will work as well long as you, this video is out and all that stuff but it gives you totally different kind of picture of the whole situation here suddenly it seems that it, there is not just only this original guy who is innocent and all and this other guy is a thief and all who went to with metal blade to create this album called hospody and released which was the one that i reviewed now because people were basically pressing me asking me and whatever to listen to uh, the other, the original Batushka second album by uh, Dravikovsky, the one that is actually running on the background, just mute, um, because people wanted to know what I am thinking of, and the people th th thought that I should, you know, listen to it, and so I would figure out that he's a better songwriter and all. Now that I've given some listening to it, like one, once fully and almost, almost a second time fully as well, then I run out of time, and all that stuff, I don't know actually which one is better. I think, to my opinion, would be if I was giving you know the proper amount of time to listen to pro more properly, I would probably pick Hospody if I had to choose one. I don't know why would I have to, but like you know, my music buds is more on the Hospody side. That is not to say that the other, the true Batushka by uh, Dravikovsky is bad or anything like that. I think it's very at the very least the same level of liturgy, even if not better. So. I think the liturgy is the loser of this trio. When are we talking about music alone, solely about music? What what is what is the truth behind this drama? Is it one of those ghost stories? By ghost story, I mean the Swedish band Ghost, which actually went to the court because of money, power, trademarks, and all that stuff. And that's a way bigger band. 
like not like I said with the immortal example, this is way smaller thing, even though this is not a small thing, because obviously these guys are going to court. This whole band thing is under dispute, because there's like three versions of Batushka, if you go, for example, on Metal Archives, you will find the original one, and then you will find these new sprouts, these two different Batushkas, the fake one and the true one. But like I said, who knows what's the truth? People are more or less, you know, finding their kind of a moral code, their compass, like, we're gonna support this original guy because he created Baduska and the rest must be fake. But especially when Mr. Drabikovsky said that. That's, um, that's kind of a believable statement, right? But they, on the other hand, they haven't probably even read the other version. And I'm not saying it's more accurate. I'm not saying it's more truthful. I'm just saying there are different versions of truth to be found out. Now, usually these kind of things are like a contest. So whoever gets to tell the their version of truth first is the solid one that gets sympathies and all that stuff. And once again, I understand why Drabikovsky is getting all that because after all, he is the original songwriter and all that stuff. So basically, I am more inclined to understand that he was the one that got screwed over. But then again, these other versions of the whole same story uh, give this a little bit of a different feeling like maybe neither of these guys are going with full-blown truth here. Maybe there is more to this drama than we are allowing ourselves to accept, accept you know, and all that stuff. And to be honest, I think the audience is actually winner, winners here. Why? Because we have now two good bands creating the music. Now, when we're talking about trademarks and all that stuff, it gets a little bit more difficult. And then when we mix moral things with black metal and all that stuff, it gets kind of ridiculous because moral and black metal, guys, seriously, this is going to be solved in the court. And until that, we don't know what's going to be the whole thing with Batushkas. There are two stories or, a, or even more versions to this truth than just one. So let that sink before you go on your internet rage about some review taking sides and all that stuff. Just remove your head from your butts and figure out yourself. I strongly suggest you getting into those links, both versions, and dig deeper if you have to. If it was up to me, I would totally love to interview both of these Batushka guys and you know find out what they have to say. But until that happens, my hands are up and I'm expecting more info to be found. Thank you for watching this opinion video. Looking forward to your comments. See you soon. Bye-bye.